Welcome to Living Free in Tennessee, where we talk about building the life you choose on your terms. Today is Monday, June 19th, 2022, and this is episode 761 of Living Free in Tennessee. And today is a Monday show. But this one's a little bit more like Nicole Unplugged because I have had a lot of busy stuff going on. And I got home at midnight last night and I'm leaving again in about an hour and a half. So need to unpack and pack still. So we're going to do this podcast. I will probably produce the audio from the airport and then we'll go from there. And that is what happens in life sometimes, which is super exciting. Okay. So here's what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to talk about is when you're making lots of policies and rules, The deal is that you need to fire somebody and other words of wisdom that I have come across over my life. This was really sort of a review of some things I've been thinking of. I've had a lot of time in my head the last little while. So we're going to talk about those. Before we jump into that, we will go through some of our regular Monday sessions and then we'll wrap up. Sound good? I hope it sounds good. If you want to get a question in for those of you on the live stream, Put the first few words in all caps for me. I'll start it and try to work it into the show or we'll get to it at the end. Now, I want to talk about the featured event of today's podcast, which is the Homestead Starter Pack, which is a seven week webinar series. It's an online training course for some basic homesteading skills. It pairs really well with the smart homesteading webinar that we did last month. And if you sign up today, you will get that with it for free. So you can do the smart homesteading webinar pre-recorded first, and then jump into our first skill, which starts this Wednesday at 5 p.m. Central. And it's being led by a great instructor, Mike Leonido, who has been homesteading for over 16 years. He's going to talk about how to have a successful garden your first year. Now, I know a lot of you have already started your gardens, but some of you haven't. Some of you are thinking about next year or this fall. And even if you have Anytime you can learn from people who are growing plants really well and keeping weeds down and what they've done to have success out of the gate, you'll find gems in that that are super helpful. So the link to that is livingfreeintennessee.com. And if you scroll past the first three posts, it'll have our event calendar and there's a link right there. It's the Homesteading Starter Pack. It's $495 for the seven-week course. I am one of the instructors. I'll be going over food preservation, water bath canning, pressure canning, and making cheese. Mike Leonido is going to talk about raising small-scale poultry, so rabbits and chickens. He's going to talk about how to have a successful garden in your first year and curing meats for the homestead. So homestead scale meat curing, not like all this crazy stuff. That's that's an advanced level class. And then Ryan Steva from thehomesteadconsultant.com is coming in to talk about taking a systems approach to your small livestock that will help you work through kitchen waste, make compost, get food as a byproduct, and all of those things working together. So we sort of start with the skills of gardening and poultry, and then we go to handling your waste and combining gardening and poultry into a whole system to make your life easier. It's going to be really cool. It's the Homestead Starter Pack, seven-week course. If you're a member check out the member portal on that. It's $4.95 right now. And I will also announce, I will share a discount code that I let Jack Spirko use, which is TSP Bacon. That gets you 200 off. So if you do that before Wednesday, if you sign up, you get $200 off. So then it's only $2.95 for a seven-week course. It's going to be fan-freaking-tastic. I can't wait to do it. The next thing I want to do is thank our two sponsors today. The first one is, in fact, Ryan Steva from the Homestead Consultant, who has really put together a really cool business where he works with aspiring homesteaders and existing homesteaders to help set up their homestead with a permaculture lens. He comes out to your homestead, works with you to establish your, your top line goals, and then creates a list of projects, shares ideas, best practices, and can even help you execute. If you want to know more about that, it's the homesteadconsultants.com or the links are in the description of the YouTube video or in the show notes if you're listening to the audio podcast at livingfreeintennessee.com. My second sponsor is EMP Shield. Nicole, 
you're not an end of the world gloom and doomer. Why would you have somebody sponsoring your show who's worried about EMPs? Well, here's the deal. My opinion on EMPs is if one happens on a large scale, a lot of the things people put in place to protect themselves from EMPs aren't going to be very useful because a lot of our electrical be grid will be down. So if you haven't figured out how to generate your own electricity, that ship sailed. That's my that's where I'm coming from on this. But I do know this lightning strikes and when lightning strikes power lines, it blows out everything in your house if you don't have protection and that's your appliances. It could be your computers. You can have all sorts of things go wrong. EMP shield can protect against that. And they have insurance if their device fails. So you put it in, you have an electrician install it. It's not very expensive. I think they're like $375 right now. But if you use the coupon code LFTN, living free in Tennessee, you get 50 bucks off. So that's over at empshield.com. And I am more than happy to work with them. They're act I, I know that everybody over there really well, and they're not all about end of the world as we know it. They're all about making smart decisions to protect your self from things that can happen with an unstable grid, which we've all seen how that's been going down the last couple of years. I have had more power outages here and surges and all sorts of stuff like that in the last year as I have had I guess two years as I've had in all the years before then, and I've been here 15 years. So I had 13 years of a couple of power outages. And then I've had like outage, 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 outage in the last two years. It's crazy. And then surges, all sorts of nuts stuff. Last time it happened, I just, I saw a lamp pulsing and I was like, Oh yeah, we got power coming out. Cause it'll like pulse three times and then it comes out. And then if it comes back on and there's a surge as part of that, that's when something like EMP Shield can also help you. Anyway, the live stream schedule this week. I'm traveling. Uh, yesterday, I got home from Oklahoma at about midnight. I am very thankful that my friend Michelle came over and roasted my coffee orders today. She just left. She got those all out while I was preparing show notes and working on getting ready for Self-Reliance Festival to make sure we're marketing the event this week while I'm gone. That's right. I'm going to be gone. So there is no Tuesday Live this week. But we will be doing our Thursday Self-Reliance Festival live at 7 p.m. And the Friday Homestead Happenings live stream will also happen. We'll talk a little bit more about why at the end of this show. But I am heading to the airport in about an hour and a half. So we're going to wrap this up on time today, guys. Anyway, our first usual Monday segment is Tales from the Prepper Pantry. And this is where we talk about storing what you use and using what you store. And it's all about chicken workshop prep because that is Saturday this week. So I am pulling from the pantry to feed everybody. We're going to be smoking a big old piece of pork. And I'm going to turn that into smoked pork enchiladas. And it is not keto friendly. I'm using actual corn tortillas. So what I do is I do, I smoke the pork, I pull the pork. And then we put a layer of cheese, a layer of tortillas, a layer of pork enchilada sauce. If you haven't ever made homemade enchilada sauce, it's really easy to make. I have a recipe at livingfreeintennessee.com. It's a recipe of the week. Delicious. I'm actually going to use commercial enchilada sauce this week because of my weird schedule. And then you just layer it like a lasagna. So it's like an enchilada casserole rather than individual en rolled enchiladas. So that's going to be one of the things we serve at the workshop. And then for people who are staying keto, I am making beef chili which does have tomatoes in it, but it's straight up like no carbs added except for the carbs that are in the tomatoes and onions. I'll have some green peppers in there. Those have carbs and we'll serve it with, you know, you can put green onions on top and cheese and all sorts of delicious stuff. And then we have macaroni and cheese as a side dish, which is not keto at all. We'll have some coleslaw and some other sides for folks who are coming. So that's, that's all been planned based on what's coming out of the garden and based on what is, available from my pantry, from the meat we've raised here. I really do my best when we do events at the Holler Homestead to feed people from the pantry or from what we have grown here as much as possible. And I'm pretty sure I haven't gone to look. I'm pretty sure the cabbages for the coleslaw are coming from my garden. And that's a first timer because usually I don't get my cabbages past the cabbage worm influx. This year I sprayed them with um, wood vinegar, which is like that's it's liquid smoke mixed with water. That it appeared to work or we didn't have a bad year with cabbage, uh, cabbage worms this year. So I don't know which one of those things it was, but I'm excited to actually get cabbage off the garden this year. 
We are also going to be redoing the shelving in the prepper pantry. I've held off on this because we wanted to raise the roof and redo the roof there. It's got some rot issues and other things. And the budget just has not, like, I've prioritized budget in other places, like getting some of the water runoff issues dealt with, putting the solar system in to make the water work and some other things. And we have some issues in the pump house that are taking a higher priority to a roof that's not actively leaking or getting worse, but just needs some updating. So since that's not happening, and I also want to do a house addition long term over on that side of the house, I've got um, I've got all of these makeshift shelves in there, which is it just makes it really hard to store my stuff. And so I'm actually stealing an idea that I got from uh, Wendy Riles, where because I use those like big wire shelves with the plastic things on them, and they figured out that you can buy two sets of those. And you don't have to put two shelves together with big spaces between the shelves. You can just put more shelves in one shelf and then you have extra poles to like strap up from the ceiling and hang things from or whatever. So that's sort of the approach I'm going to be taking on that because right now there's some inefficiency in my shelves in that I have like baskets of things that would stack better on individual shelves. But because my shelves are like there are five shelves in each rack and they're super far apart. It, it just wasn't working right. And then, you know, you can't just, you can stack a board on top of stuff, but then it falls over and that makes a huge mess and you don't want that huge mess. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about getting into that. I also scheduled an intervention with a friend. I don't know when it's starting, but since the kitchen remodel, um, when I remodeled the kitchen, as y'all know, like we ended up reframing the, the joists of the house and a whole bunch of other stuff. And that's where the budget went for that. And I have restaurant work tables and some other things that I'm using in my kitchen until I have enough set aside to redo cabinets. Well, what that means is I don't have cabinets. And traditionally in my life, I put things away in cabinets. So I asked a friend to come help me um, do the final push of redoing all of that, figuring out where things go that I don't have. Like I have bins of tea. I don't have cabinets to put tea in. Like, how do I do this? Do I put shelves on the wall from scrap lumber around here? Like, what do I do? So, uh, and along the way, I'm planning to get rid of another probably 20% of what's in this house because the less, th the fewer things you have in your house, the better off you are. Because what I've found is over 15 years of living here, things that are put away, all the time and never come out are actually probably not being used. And then they're in the way of the things that need to, you know, come in and out and be used. So for me, with the way my brain works, I realized I needed to have somebody else here to do it. And she had time. So we're going to have a bit of an intervention on just home organization in a way that makes sense. Because I did also change in the last 10 years, I've changed how I organized my house from more of a permaculture perspective of the things I use all the time are easiest to get hold of. And the things I use once a year are, you know, in the backs of things, that sort of thing. So that's everything that's going on in the prepper pantry and the household and the kitchen. Next segment is operation independence. This is where we talk about local ongoing revenue. And I don't have a specific thing to cite revenue wise. What I do want to say is that the last two weeks, have had a lot of things going on in my life personally. And it has meant that I needed help and some other people around me needed help. And what has happened is you all have reached out and just sort of had ideas, helped me out, done all sorts of stuff. Like I had a call this morning with somebody who's making sure all of the self-reliance festival marketing communications happens this week. Um, while I'm traveling so that I don't drop the ball on that. And that's what I mean when I say social capital, when we talk about different forms of capital, right? It's not just money. It's, you know, stability comes from tapping into different kinds of, of capital in your life. Being a good prepper doesn't just mean like having lots of guns, right? Like you have a, a food savings account and a paper supply savings account and you have a skills savings account and all of these other things like knowledge really helps you. Well, the community in the last two weeks for me has been invaluable in me being able to keep going and get some content out 
as well as keep the coffee orders going out the door as because I'm more of a solopreneur than than somebody who has a lot of employees. And I wanted to say thank you for that, for everybody who's reached out. A lot of you have texted me and um, and and gotten things done when I was like, I don't know how I'm getting this done, but it needs to get done. And you would have an idea. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. And that makes me more independent, even though I'm dependent. Isn't that weird? So John Willis put out a really cool t-shirt a few weeks ago and it says, go faster, go alone, go further, go together. So go faster, go alone, go further, go together. I don't know if he's sold out of that shirt. Uh, that would be over at original soegear.com. But I was wearing that shirt and I, it was one of those days where I just got up, put an SOE shirt on, walked out the door to the airport because I was flying to Florida that day. And people are looking at my shirt and I'm like, I wonder what my shirt says and if I should have even worn this shirt to the airport, you know, like all of that. And I, so I go, and then you're like, you're in the mirror and it's backwards. And I finally figured out like what it said by reading my shirt. And I was like, oh no, this is really like, that is the cool thing. That's why we, that's why we do these combined podcasts and interview people. It's why we do self-reliance festivals, why we have all of these events is the more together we are, the further we can go. And I really felt that the last couple of weeks. So thanks guys. With that, it's time for, time for the main topic of today's show. And that is you need to fire someone. You need to fire someone. My phone is blowing up guys. So I'm just gonna do something I don't usually do because there are things happening in the background and I'm not sure why. Okay. It's nothing. I, it's nothing urgent. Okay. So I was like, I just got 25 texts. That means one of two things. One, I got put on a group text and now everybody's talking to everybody about nothing in particular or two, something big is happening. It was the former. So when you are making lots of policies, you need to fire somebody. Those words were said to me when I was in my twenties, starting my first solopreneur project. And at that time I was putting together executive training uh, for companies to who were bringing expatriates into the U.S. or sending U.S. people out, and when when you go to another country, you like there can be a language issue, but there's a cultural difference that it's very helpful to know. Like if you wear the wrong color, you could really offend people in certain countries. Like you, white can be a funeral color. And like, they'll know that you didn't mean it, but then they'll be like, why are you wearing this dreary color, right? It's like, why are you going all emo on us? And, and so that's what I was doing. I was helping people learn those things, figure out how, the logistics of going to another country and getting a household set up and helping people who were coming here. And I loved doing that. That was like my first thing I ever did that I loved. It was really fun. But what would happen sometimes is you would get somebody working for you as a contractor or working for you as an employee who would put in their expense reimbursements and it would be like, what is all of this? And why is it on your expense form? And then you would have to say like, okay, yes, we pay for meals, but we don't pay for $500 meals for one person. Right. And so then your meals are reimbursed up to $25 a meal or whatever. This was the nineties. Things were cheaper then. And, and then as I was starting this business, I got a call and I said, I'm, I was all excited. I'm starting this business. And the person on the other phone said, just remember this. I know you're going to be successful because every time I call you, you call me back. But if you find yourself making lots of detailed policies, you don't need the policies. You need to fire somebody. And I thought about it. And here's what I got out of that is if people are working with you or for you and they believe in what you're doing and they understand enough about how the business works, to be on board with whatever your mission is, whether the mission, I mean, like, I don't necessarily mean like charitable mission, but the mission of the business, in this case, it was to equip people to be able to go out of the country or come into the country. Right. And 
they're there and they're on board and they're motivated on it and they love it as much as I do, then they're not going to be looking for every way they can squeeze every extra penny out of the company because they want the company to succeed too. And if you get somebody who is a burden to the company, you're making policies about showing up on time or working while you're working or finishing things or, or expense reimbursements, then that person is not a good fit. And if you don't fire that person soon, all your people who are a good fit, who work hard, who have the big picture in mind, who, when they see an opportunity, pass it along, like, hey, we could probably sell something to that company over there, those people go away because you're leaving the dead weight there and they can see the dead weight and dead weight is the fastest way to go out of business. Now, I took that to heart in my 20s and I was pretty mean about stuff into my 30s. And then I started a business that was a nonprofit and had somebody helping me with HR and they started this thing where you put people on notice to say, if you don't improve this, that changes and you document it and all of that. And what that did over time was leave people in positions they should not have been in way longer than they should have been there. And that was a problem. And I let that happen, right? It wasn't because this was like the thing you have to do, because I do think it's important. If somebody's not performing and they work for you, you, you need to be able to clearly say, this is the expectation. You did not meet the expectation. I need you to meet the expectation or the end result will be that you are out of a job. And so I think that kind of, of communication is very important. Um, giving chance after chance, after chance, after chance, after five, like at some point it's not, or being like, it's better to have somebody doing poorly than to have nobody and leaving them there doesn't work. So when I go back to these words, when you're making lots of policies, you need to fire somebody. I wish I had just like during that time had that printed out on my board because, you know, we're in a society or time in our culture right now where you can see people leaving underperforming employees in place because they don't have anybody else. And they're thinking it's better to have this underperforming employee than to not have enough employees. I think they're going the wrong way on that one. I think the problem would remedy itself a lot faster if the underperforming employees were let go and you just treat the ones who are your top performers well. So I don't mean work those people 18, 20 hours a day, right? I mean... If you've got a top performer, reward them for it. If you have a top performer, incentivize them to perform better. And if you have a top performer who's like, this is a Monday through Friday job and I'm top performing Monday through Friday and I'm bringing you lots of value and just like no Saturday, Sunday, please work that into your business, right? Because if they have the big picture in mind and if they are a top performer, that's a good thing. You want to keep them around. A lot of times people who are top performers actually want to put in a little extra work. So let them do that and pay them for it. Uh, but if you're making lots of policies and rules, you need to fire somebody. Now bring this into the family. That's a lot harder to execute in the family, isn't it? Right? I don't know what to tell you about that, but it's the same principle, right? If you have somebody in your family that's making you have to make lots of rules. And I understand like raising children is complicated. Sometimes um, you need to fire somebody. Whatever that looks like for you in a family environment, you need to fire somebody. They need to not be in a position that they're bringing everybody else down. So some boundaries need to go up. So that was my first words of wisdom that I was thinking about. The second one is call people back on their terms. When John Willis reaches out to me from special operations equipment, he does not call me. He does not text me. He sends me a Facebook message. I don't like talking to people on Facebook Messenger all that much, but if I want to talk to John Willis, that's the way he's comfortable talking. And so that's how we communicate. The reason I am hesitant to long-term communicate with most people on Facebook is that if you, 
if you communicate with me on Facebook, it's as if the conversation never happened the minute it's over. So if you're like, I need this really complex thing from you, Nicole, if that's not an email for me, in the email for me, it will never happen. And so when people reach out to me on Facebook like that and ask me complicated things, I'll say like, send an email to this address. And I give them my email address, which is Nicole at livingfreeintennessee.com, which is the one I say on the show all the time. It's not like a super secret address. That's where I get email. Now, the reason this is important, and it was also word of wisdom in my 20s, is that when you call people back, they think you care. <laughs> like basically they say, hey, question, leave message. And then you call them back and they're like, oh, okay. Where I have struggled the most on this one is in fact, with all of the different ways that people can, can contact me, I will lose track of things. And email is also still a challenge for me. I have to schedule email time to answer email. I get a lot of email. And sometimes when I'm busy like this week, things will kind of get down into the inbox. Although let's see, where are we at today? I only have 25,000 emails in that inbox, which does not matter. It's my spam. I have 559 emails right now in my inbox. And that number was 2,500 two months ago. So after start, starting 75 hard, I also scheduled in times for email and I've caught up on a lot of emails. Some of you have gotten emails where it's like, wow, I sent that two months ago. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm down to 550 now. And my goal is that that number every Friday is 50 lower than the number before. So I deal with all of the week's emails plus 50, which means, and, and that actually means that I'm 159 emails behind right now because I need to be at 400 at the end of the day Friday. So that's super exciting. So calling people back is very important. And I think it's the hardest thing. And I think it's the thing that with social media and how things have changed in communications, it's hard for all of us. And with that, I give people grace who don't respond to me. Like I've got somebody who I need a logo from them for Self-Reliance Festival who I've asked for it a couple of times in the last two weeks. And I don't like send a mad email because I don't have it. It's just like, hey, I'm really looking forward to working with you. I'd really love your logo so that we can use it for promotions because you sponsored the event, right? So that's that's something where I pair that with give people grace because it, it can be very overwhelming, especially as you grow as a company or a brand when you're getting lots of email. That said, um, the more you can get back to people, the better it is, right? Like, and some of you are listening to this going, I've been waiting for an email for two weeks and yes, you have, uh, I will do my best. That's, <laughs> that's where we're at with that, but call people back and do it on their terms when it's, you know, if, if I'm going to get Joel Salatin to come to an event and the way Joel Salatin com communicates is a written letter in the mail, then if I want to get his attention, I need to write a written letter in the mail. Likewise, if you want to talk to me and I respond to email, what you need to do is send me an email, right? And not a text message. So that's just good advice for moving forward in life if you're interacting with different people. And sometimes you're that person where you get to say, actually, this is the way I need you to communicate with me for this to be successful. And other times it's like, you need to suck it up and SMS somebody who just SMSs, which for me, like the worst way that I communicate is this device, unless it's like using words on this device because I hate typing with my thumbs. I, if you send me a long email on the phone, I, I have trouble visually seeing everything because the words are so small. My eyes aren't that great. So I love working on the computer. I was just talking to somebody today. I hate Instagram and I'm using it now for promotion because I need to use it for promotion for Self-Reliance Festival. But the reason I hate Instagram is I can't post to it from my computer. And the only ways I can post to it from my computer require gymnastics, which I have not done on my computer. Maybe one day I will. Uh, this last two weeks, I spent time relearning how Instagram works and how to connect it to different things. And the two reasons Instagram is hard for me is I am not a visual person and it is a visual platform. And two, the only way to post to it is here. So then I am, you know, typing up stuff on my computer, putting it in Telegram, cutting and pasting it onto Instagram from my phone. And it's just, I hate it. I hate it, but I'm doing it anyway because I have to do it. Sometimes you just need to do the things to get the stuff done. And that's one of those do the things. So this is the third one. If you're having trouble focusing, go work out. 
I've known this my whole life. And sometimes I stop working out and I get fat. And sometimes I stop working out and I stop focusing well. But if I take care of the body, the mind comes back and my mind works very quickly and it will go over a, a broad top. <laughs> it'll scatter out over many topics at once. Letty, who's in the chat right now, talked to me this morning. She knows how scattered I am today. Uh, and a workout helps me focus and reorient. And it's, it's crazy, but especially a cardio one really helps with that. So if you're having trouble focusing for whatever reason, it could be that your finances are about to go over a cliff. It could be that your kid just got kicked out of school. It could be that your brother is in, in, in the ICU. Whatever it is, go work out because you'll get a reset. And that's super, super important. Those three pieces of wisdom were taught to me by my Uncle Mark. And he's my mom's brother. And last week he had a routine surgery and um, they didn't realize it, but he, he, when he came out of the anesthesia, his whole system did not wake up. And um, as a result of that, he passed away. So part of why things have been so up in the air the last week is because of that. But I'm really thankful that I have gotten these three pieces of wisdom from my uncle even though I've flubbed the ball on him a few times because he was willing to take the time to talk to me on the phone about it. And when I was thinking about like, what do I do for today's episode? I thought, you know, I've never shared these words of wisdom with anybody and these three things. And it's funny that it's three, isn't it? These three things have probably helped me more than most. When you're making lots of policies, you need to fire somebody, call people back, on their terms if you're selling them something basically and if you're having trouble focusing go work out it's simple it's so simple and the only part that's hard for any of us who are empaths like i am is executing on the firing somebody part because you're going to hurt their feelings there's no way to fire somebody without hurting their feelings by the way but their feelings aren't your problem your problem is keeping your team strong, right? So anyway, those are my words of wisdom. We're having a relatively short show today because I'm heading to the airport to go to my uncle's funeral. I will be back in the saddle on Wednesday. We will be doing the Homestead Starter Pack at that time um, in the evening. And it, the first lesson actually very thankfully is being led by Mike Leonido. And that's really cool because that means that I am his support. I'm going to tell some stories about raising vegetables, but he's in charge of that one. And if you want to check it out, definitely go to livingfreeintennessee.com and check that. Um, I did have one last word of wisdom that I got from my mom this week. And she called me up and she said, I just realized anybody can die at any time. And I thought about that. And it sounds very negative and it's not embrace that. If you know, anybody can die at any time when your friend says, Hey, do you want to go for a walk in the morning? And you're going for a walk anyway, go for a walk with your friend. When you need to decide, Hey, am I going to drive 12 hours to pick up a dog in 12 hours back? Or am I going to fly and save time so that I'm more physically fit because I could die at any time. You make the better decision for yourself. I'm in the middle of reading the, uh, the subtle art of not giving an F and I'm not saying the F word today because I'm not marking this episode as explicit, but they actually say that word in the book for those of you who have not read it. And it's, it's a cool, what's nice about it in timing to this whole time in my life is the subtle art of not giving an F is not about screw everybody else. It's about if you don't care about the things that you shouldn't care about, right? If you don't care about the things that are none of your business, if you don't care about the things that don't really matter in your life, then you have time to actually care about the things that are most important. And if you pair that with anybody can die at anybody's at any time, right? You can, you can do a lot of things and you don't look back and regret things. I don't regret anything with my uncle, 
even though we didn't like in the last 10 years, we haven't seen each other much. Um, but I don't regret that because he was doing what he loved best. I was doing what I loved best. And to the degree we have a relationship, a loving relationship that was there, but we did not have a close relationship where every day I needed to call. Like my relationship with my mom is very close. She works for me. Right. But that doesn't make that, that loving relationship any less of a positive impact in my life. And when I thought about the three things I learned from him in my twenties, I was like, I literally, if I would have totally embraced those and internalized them would have been twice as far along now as I am. But I, I sometimes have to learn my lessons the hard way. So that is, that's really cool. So anybody can die at any time. And that means in death, that's your time and what matters, not in the endless distraction. So I hope today's episode shared some wisdom with you. It's a little bit different than most of my episodes. If you like the show and want to support the work I'm doing here, get your copy at hollerose.com. Also, you can become a member. To find out more about that, go to livingfreeintennessee.com to find out more. With that, guys, go out, make it a great week.